Mamadou Njai was a first-round NBA pick from Senegal. His career began at Auburn University, where he eventually broke Charles Barkley's career record in blocks. Mamadou's NBA career allowed him to play with his hero, Hakeem Olajuwon, as well as deepen his hunger for coaching. Join me, Charles Wolin, for an inside perspective on a basketball mastermind that will bring his love of the game to USF. Mamadou, thanks so much for joining us. Really appreciate you being here on Inside uh, Perspective. You grew up in Senegal, typically a footballing country. Um, and I just got to ask right off of the bat, 1998 World Cup champion France goes to the 2002 World Cup in their first game against your home country, Senegal. And Senegal defeats France by a goal to nil in 2002. Where were you? What were you doing? Uh, 2002 was, was an amazing year, you know. I mean, I was traveling. I was in the Middle East. I was in uh, actually Mecca. When, you know, I went back to my, to my hotel, I found out the news. I was in my hotel room jumping, jumping and dancing. Everybody in Senegal, because, I mean, you got to know the history. France, France colonized us. So now, you know, for the first time, kind of, you kind of feel as a country that maybe the, you had an upper hand against, the, against those who kind of was on top of you for, for all of those uh, centuries. But Senegal is a country that loves soccer and just being able to beat France. Which is, I mean, and, and France had a really good team. Talk about like your transition and finding basketball because you were so involved in soccer. Yeah, growing up, everybody in Senegal, you play soccer. There are two things everybody in Senegal do. One is wrestling and two is soccer. So I felt I was a pretty good soccer player. And, uh, you know, I did it pretty much every single day. And, but I was really focused in school because it's not very easy. Um, you know, I think school is much harder in Africa than in, in the U.S. So you really have to be focused and also just, it's not like you're on campus, you just get up and go to your classes. To get to school can take you two to three hours. So you gotta walk, you know, a few miles to get to the bus station. And the buses are always full, so you gotta be chasing them around. You get to the nearest stop to the school, you gotta walk a few more miles. So you gotta do that back and forth. So, and the classes have a lot of kids, so the, conditions, you have to be really focused to be able to do well and to have some good grades. So really, I didn't want to, you know, have distraction. And the first part of basketball, when people were talking to me about it, I felt it was a distraction. Until maybe uh, three years, my sister started to play uh, Fatu Kine. She played uh, in Europe. She kind of had a stint in the WNBA. She tried out with the Phoenix, uh, Phoenix team back in the day with Cynthia Cooper. Um, she really, she's younger than me. She was telling me every year to come and play, to come and play. I didn't want to. And one day a friend of my dad who knew the national team coach, you know, finally pushed my dad to kind of convince me and my younger brother, who's also almost as tall as me, to give it a try. So I was, I was 18 and decided to give it a try. And, you know, the rest is history. Let's talk about your time at Auburn, such a kind of a magical time uh, for you and that program as a whole. I mean, good players coming through and, and kind of resurrecting um, that program. It was a great experience. I mean, uh, Coach Ellis, you know, he's one of the best coaches ever. He really know the game. And to be honest, everything I learned at Auburn, when I went to the pros, it really prepared me. There wasn't really much in the pros that was new, everything we have done already with Coach Ellis. But my first year we came in with a point guard who was Mr. Alabama, and also shooting guard, Damien Fishberg, who was Mr. Kentucky. And me, I guess I was Mr. Senegal, you know. I mean, I, you know. So I didn't have any rating or anything like, like, like that. But all of us, by all the three freshmen started by the time we started conference play. And there were some good seniors ahead of us, you know, like the, actually the senior who played more minutes than me was Pat Burke, who played with the Magic. So, and played in the NBA for seven years. He's the one that I ended up starting in, in front of him and 
Fishback and Doug Robinson, uh, who was a point guard. We had four years together. Our freshman year, we did well. Sophomore year, we went to the NIT. Junior year, we had a quiz porter. And, you know, we were able to, you know, uh, to, to win the league, to win the SEC, and to go to, to, uh, to the Sweet 16. Um, and then senior year, we went to the second round. We had bunch, um, a bunch of injuries and off the court issues. Uh, but it was a great, amazing experience, and um, I've, I've learned a lot. What did that experience teach you to, to, to take it to the NBA? Everybody says it's so hard to, to get to that NBA level, and you did for so many years, and, and, and you had a good career there. What did that experience teach you to, in order to get there? I mean, you, you had to work hard. You had to have tunnel, tunnel, tunnel vision. Every day you need to get better, because coming in as a freshman, there was some, you know, tough, tough competition, and to be able even just to belong on the court, I wasn't worried about playing time, starting, just to be able to, was I even good enough? You know, I had to prove myself. Nobody knew me. I didn't even know how good I was, so you have to just improve every, every single day, you know, and just, and just to be able to take care of business, you know. So those four years really taught me how to be professional. Coach Ellis was running a first class, uh, you know, program. And just to be able to do your work in the classroom, to be able to um, do your work on the basketball court, off the court, to have a clean record. And just learning all those, you know, things that, the life skills that not only help you uh, for the next level in the NBA, but, you know, in, in, in life in general. You know, I was able to learn all of those and make them better. It wasn't just about basketball, it, it was more than basketball. And I, and I do think those four years at Auburn really, really helped me to, to improve in, in all facets of life. You were at the Raptors, you were in Dallas, and you played with Hakeem Olajuwon. Hakeem was my favorite player. You know, my two favorite players growing up was Hakeem and uh, Michael Jordan. The same year I got traded to the Raptors, and my second year, uh, Hakim came uh, to our team. Actually, one day the GM called me, said, Mom, do I have a great news? I was like, what? You know, he was like, yeah, we're going to have Hakim here. You know, he's going to be able to mentor you. That was my second season. You know, you'll be able to learn a lot from him. I was like, wonderful, you know. And then he's like, well, the next thing, you know, uh, uh, we need your number. <laughs> because, <laughs> because, because Hakim was number 34. So. <laughs> I probably should have negotiated better. I was just, I just gave it. I probably should have asked for a Rolex or a car or something, you know. Maybe they would have given me something. But I was so happy to have him. So, so excited. So I changed from number 34 to number 32. But, you know, really the reason I was wearing number 34 was literally because of him. So we had a great year together. That was his last year playing. We built a brotherhood. I learned a lot from him. Um, and, and, and until now, he's like a big, a big brother to me. Do you have an NBA coach that you still talk to, or is that guy that was an inspiration for you to get into coaching? The people I call all the time, and basically it's very, very minimal. Hakeem Olajuwon is, is one of them. Coach Ellis is one of them, you know. Um, but uh, Lenny Wilkins, whenever I saw him, you know, I mean, he was, he, he was an amazing coach. So I've learned a lot from him, you know. Was in training camp with, you know, with Phil Jackson. So, I have learned a lot, you know, with, with uh, so many amazing coaches. What was the spark that, that said, you know what, I, I want to do this too? Um, I think for me, basketball, I really had a love for it, but also I love to teach. Even during my playing days, when I see a kid training and they make mistakes, I may stop my workout just to show them what, what they're doing wrong. So that's just something that you know, naturally I love to do, to teach. Uh, I think I have a pretty good mind. I pick up information uh, pretty quickly and not just pick it up. And also I do believe that I have the ability to, to, uh, to apply it. Discuss uh, your foundation, you and your brother giving back uh, very much to your home country and, and coupled with, uh, you know, helping this younger generation rise up and, and be able to have these opportunities. Yeah, definitely. I think for me, I always done it with or without a foundation. Whenever I can help, you know, I try to help. My brother have an academy in Senegal called Flying Star. I was really active in it. We tried to help as many young boys and girls 
number one, to stay off the street. This is back in Africa because if kids, you can quit school in Senegal. You don't, it's not like, you know, um, the child, the child service is going to come at your door if your kid don't go to school. A lot of families, it's big families, don't have the money to be able to pay those scholarly fee in the beginning of the year or some of the school supplies. So, so some of the kids, they just stop going to school. So one of our jobs, what we try to do is really, really to help tell the young generation to try to stay in school. And we try to help as much as, much as we can to motivate them. I just think it's a duty for all of us to help if we can help. So, you know, we brought a lot of kids, probably 50, 60 boys and girls. And this summer, for example, we had two boys and two girls graduated college. You know, we've been doing this for, 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 for many years now. We don't really talk about it. We don't do any marketing, any fundraising, nothing. We just, we, we just work. So Taco Fall, we're we the one who brought him here. He's with the Boston Celtics now. So Kumar J went to Florida State and got, and got away this year. He in the G League with the Sixers. Uh, Taco has had a two-way contact with the Celtics. Uh, Fifi Endu, she got away from UCF with Taco. Um, and uh, Lena Nyang got away from Temple University. So just this summer. All, all four of them, and that's a, most of the kids are not going, I, and Abdullah Gay got away from Georgia, from Georgia Tech uh, this year too. So just to give them an opportunity just to, for higher education, because with education, doors open. Uh, that's fascinating, and thank you so much for sharing. I kind of want to transition to talk about USF now and you being part of the staff under Coach Golden. How did it come about? I know that you've been, you know, you were coaching at um, Coastal Carolina and Georgia Tech, um, but now you're here. What do you make of it? What do you think of San Francisco and this historic program and working with uh, Todd Golden? Yeah, Todd is amazing. It's all about relationship. Todd, I've met him the first time back in uh, 2010, when we played both for Maccabi Haifa. That was my last year playing professional. After the NBA, I went to Greece, Lithuania, China, then last year with Maccabi Haifa. And Todd was there with me. He used to have a, a ponytail and, 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 you know, he shot the ball every time too. Then, you know, he, 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 he never passed the ball. So anyway, I had to go and rebound. But that was my last year and we built a relationship and just seeing him as a human being. I think relationship is very important. Um, I, you cannot work with somebody that you don't get along with or that you don't believe in. So really, I had other opportunities, a couple of opportunities. Actually, I already agreed when Todd approached me about joining USF to go with the NBA International with the Basketball Africa League. They already proposed to me to do a basketball operation with, with the new league, which I already verbally agreed to, but Todd really sold me and knowing him as a human being, right, what type of person he is, what kind of leadership he, you know, he's going to provide to any uh, program he's ahead of. Just believing him made me, made me consider USF and finally coming on a visit, uh, meeting with Joan, uh, even at the Final Four, just seeing how uh, she's very supportive, our athletic director of the basketball program, wonderful athletic director. So just seeing all the resources coming, coming here, meeting the, meeting the coaching staff, just, just, I just feeling comfortable. But everything started with believing in Todd and believing in, in uh, his, his vision and we're trying to help him to, to, do the, to, to do a great job here. I just think every single game we're going to have a chance and, and in life, all you want is a chance, and now just, just, just what you do with the opportunity to really take it, try to take it to the next level.